All right, so here I am again on March 30th, 2020. I believe today is day 11 of my personal journey journal. And uh, let's see, just a quick recap, like that quick. This is just my journal as a laboratory technician going through the epidemic crisis of the COVID-19 virus. So, where we are right now, um, supplies are finally starting to be uh, to the point where they're going to be released, uh, but unless you're one of the hot spots uh, or the epicenters, so to speak, um, you're probably not seeing a whole lot of it yet, but it is on the way. I believe that. Um, but in the meantime, what do you do? You're, you're short. Um, maybe you got an N95 mask, and if you didn't and you're right on the front line, I'm not sure how you're operating that way. But anyway, let's say you've got your N95 mask, and you've been wearing it now for two weeks as this crisis has been going on and you're starting to wonder how long can I use this without cleaning it? Well, cleaning it really doesn't work, but sterilizing it may actually help you out here. So how can we sterilize one of these N95 masks? Well, we do know that uh, UV works, um, being that, you know, um, the sun puts off UV, and you could actually probably use the sun to sterilize these. But I've not really seen a whole lot of studies of people actually culturing off of the items um, after exposing them to natural sun UV. Now, currently, right now, Battelle Corporation in Ohio is put a, uh, we'll say, an apparatus to the FDA that is trying to push it through very fast so that they can bring that out and uh, start, uh, um, start manufacturing those so people will have those to sterilize masks and, and other utensils that they're using uh, right on the front line, you know, um, with the uh, positive patients and in the laboratories and stuff. So anyway, uh, back to the sun. Let's say um, even not as a, as a uh, health healthcare worker, if you're somebody that's trying to use masks right now, which I really encourage, and you're wanting to sterilize your mask by just using the sun, uh, what you can do is set it natural sunlight um, for just a few days. But probably the safest way to go is about a nine count. If you have nine or ten masks, and that, that, that'd be really hard to probably come by right now, but if you use a mask for a day and then you set it in natural sunlight and you get out your next mask and you do this rotation for nine days, uh, by the time the one mask has been in the, in the natural sunlight for nine days, eight or nine for that matter, it, would, it should be ready to use again. Um, but what you want to do is set the outside portion of it toward the sun because that's the portion that gets all the contamination on it. When you have a mask, and I happen to have an example right here, when you have the mask on your face and you're breathing in, it's pulling all the material to the outside of it. So the outside is actually what is getting dirty. So that's that's mainly what you really want to sterilize. Well anyway, you can use the sun that way by setting them in the sun for about nine days or so. And then that really should do it. Um, look online, Google around, you, you might actually find a more specific recipe for doing it that way. Um, let's see, another way to sterilize them um, we know is by heat. Uh, the, the coronavirus itself is actually very delicate. Now once it gets into the body and, and, and the, the specific white blood cells picked it up and started using, you know, hijack that cell and starts making more and, and, and using it for its own purpose, it becomes a very wicked thing. It's a, it's a very, uh, just, it just, uh, I just can't even explain it. But anyway, out in the natural atmosphere, it is very delicate. And it's actually relatively delicate against heat. So uh, when the first um, uh, the SARS incident was a coronavirus, you know you've heard probably heard of SARS or MERS by now in reference to this. Well, anyway, during SARS or right after SARS, they did a lot of studies with that with that virus. And one of the studies that they actually did, sorry, I've got somebody a little slow there. Anyway. One of the studies that they did was they actually cultured the outside of these masks after exposing them to heat to find out what heat and how much time 
would it take for that virus to become inactive? Now you might actually be able to still find the debris of the virus on the, on the material, but it's inactive. In other words, you, if it ingested into the body, it wouldn't function anymore. It wouldn't work. So anyway, what they figured out was, and I had them jotted down here, is that at 90, or at 132 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 minutes, it didn't survive. At 152 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes, it didn't survive. And at 167 degrees for 30 minutes, it didn't survive. So at that, um, at the lowest temperature, you're, you're pretty safe at actually placing your N95 mask to that exposure. Now with those numbers, I just want you to think though, at the shortest time at 30 minutes, at 167 minutes, the temperature gets a little high for certain things on the mask. And here's, here's, my, uh, here's, here's what I mean. Some N95 masks have a filter or a, um, a valve. Sorry, and this is a 3M N95 with one of those valves on it. This valve has a little flap inside of it, and what it does is when you're inhaling, it pulls that flap against flat against that valve on the inside, and that forces all the air to come through the actual filter. And then when you exhale, the flap opens up, making it easier for you to be able to breathe, and they're cooler. Some people prefer them because they are cooler and it's just easier to breathe. But the weak point of that mask is that valve. So, knowing that that little flap in there, in that valve, there's a little flap, and I probably won't be able to get it focused on it right, I'm not so sure how much heat it would take. So to do this kind, you might want to back off on the heat and increase the time. So maybe you want to go with the lowest at 132 degrees, for about 90 minutes, but I'm not going to be sterilizing that kind of mask. There's the N95 masks that do not have that, and so that's what I'm going to be uh, sterilizing. Very similar to just this cone mask, just like this. So I'm going to increase my time, and I'm going to, I'm going to shoot for above the 167 mark. Um, I have set my oven at 175 degrees and I'm planning on just uh, sterilizing for that 30 minutes. So, I have um, already preheated here, set a thermometer on the inside so that I can verify the temperature on that. So, I'm going to check that, and because my age is a little bit over 21, um, I may need my uh, birth control to uh, look at that. Let me see. Very good, very good. So it's actually sitting at about 180. But when I open this up, I know that the heat's going to escape, and then you know I'm going to set it in there very quick. Now what you want to do is, <coughs> excuse me, is put your mask into a paper bag, regular paper bag like this. Now, you know, be thinking, be smart, be wise. If you're using a gas stove, you might want to really think about this. Okay, putting paper in a gas stove might cause a fire. It could cause a fire in a regular one if this fell down on the elements. So I have placed a pan in there as well. But, safety first. Remember to have your fire extinguisher close by. I can't stress that anymore if you're using a gas stove. But, I'm using electric, but I'm making sure I've got this here. And, always make sure that you know about pass. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Safety first, all right? So anyway, so what we'll be doing is placing our mask into a regular brown, like lunch style, paper bag, and then just folding it over, and we're just going to set it in there. And it's just going to sit for those 30 minutes, and that should do it. So if you are really desperate to have your mask sterilized, you may need to do what you got to do. Um, now, one thing to be aware of is if you've been using this mask you know, in an actual frontline experience, the mask is considered dirty. If you bring that in your house, you had better be prepared to clean everything, okay? Um, I, just, I just want to warn you of that. Now, if you're using your mask to take to the grocery store and stuff like that, I really suggest 
that when you are not using the mask that you place it into a brown paper bag this way so it can breathe just a little bit and it's not supposed to breathe the, the virus but what you don't want to do is create a, um, a, a petri dish or a, a spot for it to just to harbor that um, that virus so anyway I hope you got something out of this I hope it's useful for somebody hopefully there's just millions and millions of masks on the way and we won't have to worry about doing this but if you need to do this you can do this in a pinch now let me add on I don't recommend using a microwave first of all there's no data that really is showing anything about how effective a microwave is and second of all all of these masks have little bits of metal on them I'm not sure if there's any of them out there that doesn't have a little metal strip that puts that on there. We're talking even surgical style mask, same thing. They got that little metal piece, which by the way, you could do your surgical mask the same way, using an oven. You know, 170 degrees, 30 minutes, you should be good to go. All right? Be safe, be smart, be wise. Welcome to the new normal.